Ooh. <laughs> All right, we got it, y'all. I had to get my mic situated. I had to get my audio right. I had to get my uh, my visual right. Y'all can't see me yet, but don't trip. Y'all can hear me. It's all good. It's your boy, N-O-R-E-K. We back with another one. Hey, check this out, right? On tonight, on tonight, we tapped into Kwame Brown, talking to my boy Tough Love. Hey, I fuck with Tough Love, too. I, I mess with Tough Love, right? But tonight, they're having a great conversation. I just want y'all to be a fly on the wall. And y'all tell me, this, this is a reaction video at the end of the day. But y'all tell me who was right, who was wrong, or who made the, who made the better points, and so on and so forth, right? It's your boy N-O-R-E-K, man. Y'all tap in, man. Hit the like button, hit the bell, hit the notification, hit the share. Like, share that thing. Like, don't just hit it. Beat it up. Boop, boop. Mike Tyson, that thing. You know what I'm saying? One rounder. And uh, subscribe to the channel. But yeah, we going up. We going up on tonight. I'm finna bring back in Kwame and uh, Tough Love so y'all can see what's popping. We gonna start it off from right here. And uh, yeah, y'all tell me what y'all think, man. Let's get it. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's fix the audio. Let's fix the audio, y'all. My bad. My bad. Oh, what's going on? What's going on? They trying to play me out my audio? Don't do that. Don't do that. Come on, we got to go into the settings. We got to get it right. You already know we got to get it right. It ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. Output. We're going to do the Mac. Bam. Input. USB, bam. All right, let's see what we get. Yeah, call me. I didn't know that. So if your platform is all about being um, respected, when self-talk was running it by itself, you didn't have all these here problems. But I'm going to let you get on with tough love. And, uh, tough love. Yeah, we're going to let you go ahead and have the show. We can talk about that later. That was okay. him and Mr. Skinny talking. Uh, but now tough love tough come love. up. Peak the conversation. And, I, and I, again, a lot of respect for Tough Love. Because the brother, you know what I'm saying? He's a solid brother. Can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. Trying to open up this bottle. <laughs> All right. Oh, no, we got PHN this time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's have a respectful conversation as much cool, as we cool. can. Nigga, get stressed. Right. Nigga, get heated. But I don't think I've ever called you out your name. Weak Weasel is something I say to people who don't come address people directly. Okay. It can, it can be derogatory, it can be whatever. It's just a name that I made up. So. Just so you know, man, I'm, I'm actually opening up this lemonade. It's not, not, not no alcohol or nothing. Message, hey, watch what he say. See, what he just said, I'm opening up this lemonade. right? It's not no alcohol or nothing. And this is like uh, the basis of the conversation, right? Because Kwame is getting at him about, dude, why are you trying to downgrade or, or, or demoralize my character on YouTube, on the internet, on social media? Because you see me online doing my thing. I may have a beer. Like I said, I showed y'all. I'm, I'm toasting up. I'm at home. A lot of people got to go rent out a studio. I'm blessed enough to have a five-bedroom house to where I can make one of my rooms my actual studio. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. I ain't downplaying nobody. It is what it is. Tough love, Kwame Brown. Hey. So you know you know what I'm saying? Okay, so that's, what's the, thing I, that's the first thing I wanted to address, man. Okay. Now, you claim to be positive. You said that you're this positive guy and all you do is just tell people how to package their message and all this thing. So it's almost like you're like this uh, 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 you're like this brand ambassador on YouTube. You know where you can help everybody. Now keep in mind, I did watch part of this. I watched about probably 20, 30 minutes of this, this portion of his interview with him. I don't know how long it is because I didn't watch the whole thing. But what he just said is very important, right? He said the way you package your messaging. He didn't throw up air quotes or nothing. You know, his Kwame is just sitting cool and calm, cool, calm, and collective, right? Now watch how the brother respond and watch the 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 the, the response that he have in the, in the ongoing conversations is how he try to portray as Kwame is trying to downplay him. And again, tough love. I got love for you, bro. But this one right here, Kwame is very intellectual. Kwame is very sharp. Kwame is very quick on his feet. 
So you can't just pull one over this brother. Like he's a Geechee, bro. And not not to say that as far as like he's better than me, better than you, better than nobody else. But the brother is really sharp, man. He's more than just a first round draft pick. He's obviously like this brother is, man. Let's go, man. Get into the video. And that's just confusing to me because it seems like you have an underlying hate. You right after Gilbert Arenas said, "Put that beer down." You know what you did? You put a photo up of a Budweiser, you put my picture up, and then you did a live stream with that photo up. Now, not one time did you speak about drinking beers or anything until Gilbert said that. It's almost like you're regurgitating it. And another thing, I be on here all day long. Again, I'm on my hookah, on my, uh, what's this called, vape. You know what I'm saying? A lot of guys be on there smoking weed, smoking whatever they doing. Nobody nobody judges them for what they do. But at the same time, when a person has a real voice, a real platform, then we want to get outside of our of our character. We want to get outside of our box and try to hold these people in a certain circumference as if they just, like, like almost like Jesus. But guess what? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus told you he wasn't perfect by a long shot. So you can't expect a man of flesh to come on YouTube of all places, bro, and be perfect. Like, come on, keep it 100. Tough love. Salute to you, bro. And I've been said that three or four times since this video started. But I love you, bro. I love what you stand for. And I, I'm, I'm subscribed to your channel. But at the same time, I got to keep it real with you, my brother. I got to. Come on. Kwame is about to school you, bro. Kwame is about to school you. And I'm glad y'all bros was real gentlemen about it at the end of the conversation. And was able to, you know what I'm saying, have a real conversation. Because a lot of brothers can't do that. We can't have a debate and not let it lead into some Hassan Campbell or some, you know what I'm saying, foolishness. Like, and no no disrespect to Hassan Campbell, but that brother always in his feelings, man. We gonna keep it 100. Blah, blah, blah. You're repeating the things that Tammy and Gilbert say. You, you, you asking me a question or, or what? That's the question. Why would you put that up? Why are you regurgitating things of my detractors if you're just trying to be positive and try to detract from me with one thing? You said you disagreed with me on one thing, and now there's been video after video. Okay. And, and, and you're doing video. All of your videos with me in the title, hashtag Kwame Brown, mm -hmm. all of that gets you in the algorithm. So my question is, why did you talk about drinking before, prior to Gilbert Arenas? Okay, point. so I'm thinking that you mean in drinking in reference to you. So you you had requested that I go back and look at the video was the interview was about four hours long. Um, I said I looked at about an hour and some change with you actually coming up on the panel and speaking for yourself. Um, and I kind of gave my insight in regards. I thought that um, since you were already kind of uh, feeling a certain type of way with Gilbert Arenas, that the alcohol really led to um, some extra emotion. So that was a part of my thumbnail or whatever case may be. So that's the reason why I put it in. It wasn't to put it in because uh, Gilbert Arenas uh, pointed out whatever. I saw for myself that I felt like the He saw for himself. Go back and watch for yourself. The video that he's talking about, I watched the video. And this brother has made four hour videos, three hour videos, two hour videos about Kwame Brown, about the drinking, about just... Listen, man, the obnoxiousness of it. Like, you know what I'm saying? And once again, tough love. I, I respect your message, bro. I know you a military dude. I respect all military personnel. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if you're a private, if you're a sergeant, if you corporal. I don't care where, where, what, what status you are, what ranking you are. I respect you, right? But at the same time, right is right, wrong is wrong. And you seem like a solid brother the way you can understand and kind of gauge between the two and the differences. Like, what you're saying right now, it ain't really making sense, bro. It ain't adding up. And this is the thing I love about Kwame because he's very intellectual. He's not just a brother that's gonna respond off a of, respond off of emotion. He's he's not he's not easily triggered, right? He may respond like he said to the lowest YouTuber or the highest YouTuber, but at the same time, when he respond and he get off his message or he get off his verbiage, that's what it is. You gotta take it for, as a grain of salt. You know what I'm saying? You can't expect this brother because he's a first round draft pick to come in and be all high and mighty or be all none, none of that like whatever whatever your depiction is it's probably a false narrative so at the end of the day let's let's get back into the video <laughs> drinking kind of took away from the actual I'm just saying, 
So that's the only reason for that. So do you have any background in someone's tolerance and, and all that type of stuff? Because not only did you say that, your very next video, the, the one that I just watched, that was two hours long, you said that's some drunk logic. Mm. So it's like you keep referencing drinking. Uh, Tammy said that I was riding around Atlanta with no seatbelt on speed, drunk. Drunk. And my seatbelt was on. Uh, in a Mercedes, if you don't wear a seatbelt, it gives yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't cool. oh, okay. Let me let you finish. Let me let you finish. Finish. Go ahead, finish. Go this ahead. Like, but my thing. And see, this is, this is why I respect Tough Love. Because Tough Love has a sense of, he has a sense of discipline about himself. And that may come from the military. That may come before the military. You know what I'm saying? That he's able to let him uh, let let another person finish their point before he respond um, prematurely, right? So that's why that's why I get his brother the love that I give him, and that's why I respect the conversation the way I do. Again, Tough Love has some great points in this conversation because he called Kwame out on some things that I know Kwame wanted to respond in a certain way, but he chose to like you know what? All right, let me, let me, let me let me, yeah, get into the video. thing is, what you're doing is, mm -hmm. uh, you do what most snake oil salesmen do. You, It's not about what you do, it's about how you do it. How you so do you it. come across as this polite guy, and mm -hmm. I didn't really say anything wrong, but you drop these little underlying sneak disses, and you say things that, to me, is very condescending. You asked a question to me that was very ignorant. You said, because you're not in the field of basketball, you're not in the business of basketball. So your question on itself, on its face, was ignorant as hell. You asked, uh, you asked, were you ever a leader? Were you, were you a leader amongst men around Michael Jordan? So you think anybody at the age of 19 years old that has never scored a basket basket in the NBA yet, hasn't won six NBA championships, don't have the admiration of children, women, men, everybody across the world. They shoot people over Jordans in line. And your, your question to your audience was, was I a leader around Michael Jordan? Do you think anybody would have been able to lead Michael Jordan at 19? Come on. Answer that question for yourself. Answer that question for yourself. At 19 years old, at 18 years old, coming into the league, I don't care how bad you are, Iverson with these dribbles and um, Reggie Miller with these jump shots. Do you think in the business of basketball, not the – athleticism of basketball and the business of basketball because Michael Jordan is a businessman at the end of the day do you think anybody that coming in that's coming into the league that came into the league at a time when he was performing doing his thing would have been able to come in and tell Michael Jordan no X Y and Z do this this way do that that way come on that's a redundant question if you ask me in my opinion not so okay. you done yes sir cool okay so my question, um, well, to answer your question, first of all, um, yes, I do believe that a person um, 18 and 19 can lead. I've seen it in Iraq. I've seen it in Afghanistan. I see it in the street. We're talking about basketball. I got you. My thought process is this. Listen. Listen listen to his response. Listen to his response. And y'all let me know where he's making sense, how he's making sense, why he's making sense. Three questions. Where, how, why. I'll be right back. You, it's based on your maturity level. So I'm yes, asking. Not. It's absolutely not. It's based leadership, on your Leadership is based on your maturity level. And what's no, sir. no, sir. Rookies can't even talk. You to be seen and not heard. But that doesn't mean you can't be a leader. What, what, you don't even get the opportunity to be a leader. You, you've done nothing. I haven't scored one NBA bucket. This man has six rings. He, can, he has enough rings to put on two hands. And you're saying that a 19-year-old can lead Michael Jordan, and it's about his maturity. It's not about leading Michael Jordan. It's about were you a leader around Michael Jordan? Were you a leader around these men in the NBA on different teams? You think you would have been able to be a leader around Michael Jordan when he would just told you to shut the fuck up, you're a rookie? I mean, that's that's what he told you. I mean, if that's what he that's told, what he told you. you. You're, you're, see, here's the thing. You're asking me something, and I'm giving my response. But then you kind of change. You, you, do you think that? If I didn't think that, I wouldn't say it. I what, think, I'm saying is your, your, what I'm saying is your response is a response of ignorance. You're not in that field. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell a doctor how to be a doctor. I'm not going to tell a military man how to be in the military. I'm not going to tell a boxer how to be a boxer. Maturity level has nothing to do with when you come into the NBA 
with zero points, zero stats, zero anything. Everything is based on potential. And you're saying that someone's maturity level can be... You couldn't be a leader because of your resume. You can't be a leader in that field because you have no experience, sir. Because That's of your resume. Down to experience. Because of your resume. Your experience okay. with your resume. Okay, but that's what, you, what, I, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, in the NBA, you, as a rookie, no rookie is coming to a, a situation as a leader, sir. Okay. You can, be, you can be groomed to be a leader by a veteran. You in the military did not. Same concept. Military dude. When you go into the military, I don't care if you was in R J R O T C. I don't care if you was in First Cadet. I don't care if you was in... Uh, Boy Scout. Yes, you may have been had leader. You may have had leadership potentials in those situations in those in that environment. But when you enter into a new atmosphere, when you enter into a new environment, when you enter a new, into a new industry, right? When you level up, you first like for instance, the president don't just become the president. We got a president right now that that, that proves that. They don't just become the president. We had several presidents that prove that. They first have to show these skills and first have to show these abilities and first have to show these attributes. And like he said, resume. He made a great point. Your resume. And I think that's where Kwame kind of stumbled a little bit because he hit him with the resume thing. Again, the brother is very intellectual. Tough love. Shout out. He's very intellectual. He's very articulate. He listens and then he responds. So that's what makes it a great conversation. A great debate. And I love this type of stuff, man, because these brothers didn't get on here disrespecting each other. They didn't get on here talking about da 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 and when I see you, I'm going to do this, or you can line it up. None of that. They didn't get with that rah rah. They had a great conversation. Continue. Not come in as no leader. You were groomed and trained. Okay, that's your, that's your opinion, sir. You were groomed and trained by somebody with more experience than you had. And they talk to the ropes and they And sometimes I don't care, go back and watch the video. You might be saying I'm stopping it too much. Whatever. Hey, get out of here. What I'm telling you is this. You can come in as a leader in your own mind, right? You feel like you're a leader because you done led your partners to do this. You you was the leader in your clique or the crew or this and that and the third. But when you get into real life situations, when you get into real life career moves and Things that's going to be either um, growing you or detrimental to you, then you have to take a step back and know that, okay, or realize that before I, before I can call myself a leader, I have to learn how to follow. That, those are simple rules. Those are rules that's been embedded. And for one to say that I can change that just by my mindset, bro. You're clearly, clearly, clearly thinking too highly of yourself. And no disrespect to my brother Tough Love, but just let's, let's listen to the conversation. Explain to you how to do it, do your job. Did they not? Better. Correct. That's correct. So you're not a leader. So Michael, hold on. You can be a leader and be groomed for betterment. There are people who come in from all the time in, in the military who come in the military that already have leadership potential, whether it was on a football field, uh, whether on a basketball field, they already have leaders. It's, it's people. That's the point I just made. That's the point I just made, right? Look at his face. That's the point I just made. He's very intense about what he's saying. He's very convinced about what he's saying and about his belief and about his thought process. And if you listen to this video, he's going to say that word several times. My thought process is, my thought process is, my thought process is. Your thought process doesn't necessarily make it right. That's your thought process, my brother. People who've already started their families, they're already leaders. Now you can, you can teach them how to be better in the military and reference the military leadership. So yes, you can be a leader before you get to the NBA. So somebody, I was a leader before I got to the NBA. That's how I got there, sir. Okay. So my, your well, your well, question was, was I a leader around Michael Jordan, Kobe in Bryant? The NBA. In the NBA, but I was around Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, sir. And other so, and other members. It wasn't just yeah, Michael Jordan. About other members. You're talking about two, arguably of the greatest players okay. who ever played the game. So it would be ignorant for anyone to say that at 18 or 19 years old, 
that they even thought, if that was your thought process, that you were going to lead these type of men, then somebody would tell you yeah. you're absolutely nuts. Not only would the coach tell you that, the GM would tell you that, the management, everybody would tell you, you're here to fit around this guy. And if you can't do that, then you can no longer do your job. And here's your walking paper. Because we got this guy to do this job. We need you to do this. This is a job at the end of the day. Now, we have a question for you. This young man, I don't know if he has military service. So he says, so you're telling me that an 18-year-old, which is usually a PVT, uh, dash PFC led you in combat. Now I don't know what those words mean. I didn't say a leader led. I didn't say a private led me in combat. I'm saying though those privates are given leadership positions in reference to being a gun, uh, a TC, a driver. So the fact of the matter is, these these young people are put in leadership positions and they are taught how to fulfill those positions. I mean, it's real simple. Okay, and that and that's what I'm saying. I was up under the leadership of Michael Jordan. Because of his years of service. But it wouldn't have stopped you from being a leader, Kwame. It didn't stop you. You're not a leader. Oh, well, I'm you're a I, think, I think the question on his face, the way you tried to portray it to your audience, was as if I came to YouTube and I'm finally trying to display leadership. I was such a leader that I could have, I foregoed college to get to the NBA. You can't do that without leadership qualities, sir. When you get to the NBA, it's about knowing your role mm-hmm. and starring in your role. So a wouldn't that be a argument, though? A, that... a part of being a good leader and a good teammate is playing your position, starring in your role, and maturing when it's time. And this is where he gets, in my opinion, clustered in his in his wording. Because now Kwame is hitting him with facts. Because... Even if even even though he's trying to relate it to the military, which he has a background in the military, obviously I don't know if it's Army, Navy, uh, Air 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 Force. I don't know which one it is, but or Marine. Salute to all of them, right? But at the same time, what Kwame is telling them, there's a level. Each time you reach a new level, there's a new devil, right? So we've all heard that saying, and if you haven't heard that saying, go go holler at your grandmother, go holler at your your mama, go holler at your big mama, but. Or your big daddy, or whoever else, you know, send your granddaddy. But the point I'm making is this. The brothers making, both of them are making valid points. However, tough love seemed to be stuck on the fact of that because Kwame didn't take on the leadership role when he was playing with Michael Jordan, when he was playing with Kobe Bryant. Dude, these dudes are all-stars. These dudes are getting paid at the highest level of this game, of this, of this. And it was a game. It, even though it was a job, it's a game. These dudes are getting paid at the highest level. How can me, coming in as a first-round draft pick, you know what I'm saying, thinking that I'm about to come in and tell Kobe Bryant what to do, when Kobe Bryant been doing this thing for seven, eight, nine, ten years, come in and tell Michael Jordan how we how we gonna run this 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 uh, offense? When Michael Jordan pretty much owns the team, he owned the Wizard that Kwame played on. He owned the team. Come on, bro. Get real. I'm too mature. So you telling me to come in at 18, 19 years old and tell Michael Jordan what to do, sir. I think this fairy tale land that you create in your head, it will never pass over into real life. <laughs> okay, cool. So here's my thought process. Do me a favor, man. Since this is your platform, is. Do me a favor. Let's let's keep because if you was on my platform, I definitely would keep the disrespect down to a minimum. And so we're what talking about disrespected you on. No, not you. I'm saying that's for anybody on your platform since you control your, your platform or whatever. So that's the first thing. The second part is, my question was, when did Kwame Brown feel that he became one hell of an N-word? When did he become a leader? So if you're saying from your transition to high school to your selection for the NBA that you were a leader to me, that's the answer to the question. I was a leader before I got into the military, uh, before I got into the NBA. So that answers the question. Play your clip. That's not what you said. You said, am I, am I a leader? You said, am I a leader? Amongst men, I'm coming to YouTube to acting like I'm like big boy and people on YouTube. But but how I presented the situation was I'm just a bust because I came out of the cheese. And this is the thing, guys, the YouTube thing, the YouTube thing. And this is what kills me about the YouTube thing, because we get on this YouTube thing. We get a platform. We get some followers. We get a, a, a 10,000, 100,000. You know what I'm saying? We hit 200,000. Kwame is probably up to like damn near a million followers, 400 and something thousand followers, right? Tough Love got a nice little following. 
But same time, it's like, dude, why are we why are we battling each other instead of building with each other, bro? That's my thing. Like, come on, my dude. Come on, my dude. Y'all both teach preaching the same message at the end of the day. Why are you going against this man just to get some views? Like, if if that was the case, like I said on my channel, I would have been done it. I would have been approached that type of like that's not what it is, bro. That's not that's not what we about. That's not what we should be about. You know what I'm saying? We at the end of the day, you're an intellectual brother. You're a smart brother. You obviously got a family because you 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 spoke in that manner. Kwame, we know his story because he's laid it out. He's an open book at this point. But why are our brothers attacking this man just because of who he is? Just because of what he's accomplished? Like, are we jealous? Answer the question, man. I'm not above nobody. I'm not standing on nobody's shoulders. So I answered the smallest YouTuber or the biggest YouTuber. Some YouTubers thought that was crazy. But this is how I do it. If you a man and you put your pants on like me, I'm going to treat you as such. Most YouTubers say, I'm not going to talk to you unless you're big enough. My thing is, if you make sense and you want to have a conversation, let's have it. Sad. But your conversation doesn't seem to make any sense. And I can attest to that. I can attest to that. Kwame's had me up on his panel numerous of times. I try to catch this brother when he's going live. I don't do it as much so n no more. I don't do it as much no more. Forgive me if I'm getting a little, uh, you know, stuttered over my words. But I'm really intense. I'm really passionate about what I'm saying right now. Because Kwame's had me on his panel. I respect Kwame. I respect Kwame. Right? I respect Tough Love. I respect Mr. Skinny. I respect Carcino. I respect... Self-talk. I respect Kareem Regina. I respect all of these people. I respect 504 South of Mile for the South. I respect all these people. I would never go against what they're preaching, whether it's right or wrong. If I if I got something to tell you, bro, I'm going to tap into your deal, just like I did Nina Boy. And guess what Nina Boy did? He responded. He's an up-and-coming YouTuber. He ain't big yet, but he getting there. That, that He responded to me. He responded to me. He told me, bro, whoa, 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 whoa. We had, you know what I'm saying? We had a little dialect, a little dialogue back and forth. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It wasn't nothing derogatory. It wasn't no, no gang banging because we from the West Coast. None of that. It was on some grown man tip. Like, bro, man, I, I ain't even finna get into it. Y'all go watch the video, bro. Y'all go watch the video. Nor Total Access and Nina Boy. I'm telling you, we turned up over here. You seem to think because you package your message in a way that you don't seem to be disrespecting people, but you are, and you actually are. You keep getting triggered by the word hell of a nigga, and then keep saying, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Sir, that's putting you above me. I don't answer to you. Me saying I'm a hell of a nigga, I explained why. I said, I feel like I'm a hell of a nigga because I bought my mother a house. I feel like I'm a hell of a nigga because I came out of the cheese line, and I'm not a liability to anyone. I made away from nowhere. That's hell of a nigga status to me, sir. It don't have to be that to you. You're trying to make it violent. You're trying to piggyback off my words. You're trying to say mm. this and that. If you can't accept how I'm saying it on his face, then that's you. But you don't have to use my verbiage and then try to put yourself in position. You also said, if I'm the number one draft pick, I'm going to the All-Star game. You're not the number one draft pick. That's me. That part. I know the attention that comes with that. I know the women that comes with that. I know the dudes that's trying to rob you that comes with that. You don't, sir. Do you? No, no. So why would you frame it? Why are you watching everything I do and then frame it in a way of what you would do? Okay. Um. So that and cherry picking it, cherry picking it. I'm gonna let him answer, but he's cherry picking it. And like I said, Kwame hit him with some great points, cause some 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 great questions and. It's almost like he dancing around it, right? It's almost like he dancing around it. Again, I respect both of these brothers, man. You know what I'm saying? Because they got on here and they 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 made themselves vulnerable at the end of the day. Like to have a grown man conversation like this on internet on the internet where you got millions of people that's gonna view this. This is gonna grow his channel for one, and he know that. Come on. To answer your question, um, just in short, Come on. Um, I'm not watching everything that you do, Kwame. I think you you under this impression that somebody is. Um, I'm not even subscribed to your channel. Most of the things that I get 
from uh, what's going on is third party or third hand, you know, and I address things accordingly um, in a timely fashion. So it is what it is. And to go back to what he said in the first beginning, I heard what he just said, but it, what he's just saying right now is just kind of trying to dumb it down. But to go back to what he said, you see, you see the red cup. I'm putting water in the red cup. So a lot of people may think all the time, okay, you get on here, you got you a cup, you got you a little of this, you, you are over here getting drunk. No, I'm not. I'm sipping on, I've been sipping on this beer for the last hour. It's half gone. Come on. You gonna judge me because of that? I'm a grown ass man. If you decide to, man, stop playing. <laughs> um, stop but playing. My thought process in regards to the All Star game, whatever kiss be, if they are honoring the top seventy five players, whatever kiss be, you're the number one uh, draft pick from high school. That's an African American. I would think that you would be in attendance of that. Okay. So that's just my thoughts. That's just my opinion. So again, it wasn't. I think for some reason, um, because you you did the air quotes when you say package, right? So. Um, but he didn't. That's what I was saying. He didn't put up air quotes. But see, he's he's already in defense mode, and this is the thing that gets me. Go back and watch the video. He Conway did not put up air quotes when he mentioned when he made reference to the package, how you package your message. He did not. For some reason, what's being said to you, you have to ordain it to be malicious, or you have to ordain it to be disrespect versus just taking it for face value. I would think as a number one draft pick, um, you would say, hey, shit, I'm, well, not that you're not proud of it. Cool. It's that's an achievement. You should be proud of it. But I would think that, hey, yeah, you should, yeah, hell yeah, I would be in attendance if it was me. Damn right I would be. But that's what I'm saying. That's you. Again, that's you. That's my perspective. That's my perspective. That's what I'm saying. Like, you, you don't really have a message that's against mine. You're nitpicking at this point. You're saying, if, if I was this guy, I would do this. That's not, that's unfair to me. What I also have to you games with me, dissect my message like you say and go against it or whatever you want to okay. do. But saying what you would do if you were something, that's comparing yourself to me. Why are you doing that? Okay. Um, I don't. Uh, we have two different careers. The career that you took, I didn't take. There are not many people that took your career, not many people that took my career. However, if you're doing something, that's great. That's awesome. You know what I'm saying? Um, but here's the thought process. The thing is that if Kwame Brown is one uh, hell of an N-word on YouTube, wouldn't it be great to see Kwame Brown around people that's been ordained or been promoted as one hell of an N-word as well in the NBA? Around I'm your a, I'm, a, I'm a hell of a nigga in real life. Okay, cool. So my thing about it is your your claim to fame is NBA. So outside of that, I don't know. That's, really that's not my claim to fame. That's a job that I chose, sir. That basketball is a job. Whether you guys want to know it or not, it's called the business of basketball. Being drafted. Oh, you guys, okay, that's a job, sir. Again. I got paid to do a job. I got paid to entertain. So that's, so what, that's you guys, what you guys are trying to do, you're trying to make entertainment my entire life. I'm a man. Respect me as a man. Mm -hmm. And what you guys are not doing is respecting me as a man just because I got hired to entertain you. I'm not entertaining you anymore. So what I'm saying is, you putting yourself in my shoes, which you cannot do, sir. You cannot feel these shoes, just like I cannot feel your shoe. It is no disrespect. I don't think I could go through the military. That's why I did not enroll. I got a lane that I stay in, sir, and I think you should stay in yours. You can't go around all of you two and put yourself in position as that man and say, this is what I would do, and this is tough love. I just want to give you this. No, that's what that's, that's called dirty Mac. Okay, cool. So let me do this. How can you put yourself in a position of Dwayne Wade then? I didn't put myself in a position of Dwayne Wade. Notice how I don't have videos with Dwayne Wade in the title every other day. I don't even think I would do it. Whether, whether, whether it's one time or it's numerous times, if you, if you. I was gonna, I, let me finish my statement, and, and then you can say what you're going to say. I believe as a man, you have a right to say whatever you want to say. This flag in your service protects all of my rights and yours to say whatever it is you want to say. Here's where it becomes where you're doing it for profit, mm -hmm. where you're putting a man's name in the title every second of every video, where you're critiquing what this man is doing, where you're critiquing this man's clothes, where you're critiquing this man's talk, where you're critiquing oh, 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 oh. his phrase. I just said I was like, oh, nigga, that's not taking oh. anything. 
Keep keep the facts about what you think I'm doing on me. No, no that's what you said. That's what you said. Please or nothing. I'm talking about, I'm about you. You, you. You talked about me being drunk. You talked about uh, numerous of things. Doing about me having, doing, doing, if, if right now I was drinking no, alcohol. No, no. How many beers do you know I consume? It's not about that, Kwame. I just how, got how, many, how many? How many? You said it's not about that. You said you feel like drinking. You felt like drinking took over the conversation when all you saw was one beer, sir. Kwame, how many conversations you have that's that's you you're you're passionate about that you think drinking would add to the conversation? That would be a part of the I would do the same thing, dead sober. When somebody giving me, well, I've had conversations with everybody. Drinking or not drinking, you come to the situation respectful, you're going to leave with your respect intact. That's the excuse that you're trying to give me. Drinking don't control nothing. I had a beer, a Budweiser, I'm grown. It, it don't control anything, but why have it then? So you don't, you don't need the beer, you had the beer, and then your actions kind of simulated that, well, maybe... I'm saying that you're, you're, I'm you're saying, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, you're making it about the beer. I'm standing on what I said. I'm standing on my behavior. A man, all his job is to stand on and take whatever consequence and whatever reaction that he puts out. That's big facts, big facts, and that's what I'm saying. Like, tough love is 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 he's trying to come back. He's trying to rebuttal everything that Kwame is basically throwing out and saying and asking him. But again, it puts me in the mind of almost like a Hassan Campbell, bro. And I don't mean no disrespect. You may take it as disrespect if you see this video one day. But I don't. I, you know, you, you put me in that in that mindset as if you just cloud chasing, bro. Because the man is asking you some real life questions. Where do you disagree with what I'm saying? My message. Why are you going on the internet portraying and trying to demoralize my character? Why? And that's, and that's a question that a man should ask another man. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we think that, oh, because I never met this brother, I never did this. Bro, if you got so many subscribers on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, whatever the case may be, and you putting out a, a, a message about another man or another woman or another human being, and it's reaching the masses, why shouldn't that person approach you and ask you, man, why'd you do this? If I if I felt like I've never wronged you in any way, like Kwame never spoke on you, Kwame spoke to you. That's all. That's what a man does. Okay, we talk about being a man. If you're going to drink, then you're going to get criticism for drinking. To why? me, that's that's the uh, why, why, why. I'm in the comfort of my own home. Why should I get criticized about me drinking? Why should I get criticized about me doing? I work for myself, I own my own business. Businesses. I make money in my sleep. Not 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 even talking about crypto, uh, 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 stock market, none of that, because that's crashing right now. <laughs> All right, stop playing. I don't care about your, I don't care about anyone's criticism. Okay. I don't know you. I don't know Gilbert. Gilbert hasn't been around me for ten years. So your criticism comes from nowhere. You know, it's not about Gilbert. It's with anybody. If you, you, you are, saw you. one beer and made this assumption off one beer, where are you an expert in beer and who's drunk over the internet? Yeah, I see. Bobby Brown, did I tell you that you were drunk in the video? You said you believe that my drinking yes. led to my behavior. Right. And I'm saying, are you skilled and trained in that, in that analysis? I believe your drinking led to that behavior, but I didn't say you was drunk. So we're gonna stay. Okay, are, you... are you skilled, bro? Are you skilled? Are you are you a professional? Have you been trained on how to gauge these type of behaviors? Or is this just your own personal opinion? Is what the man is asking. Now I think he's gonna ask it again right here. Skilled, are you skilled in that are you skilled in that to know? How much, because you didn't see, there's a lot you didn't know to come to any conclusion. You didn't know where I was at. You didn't know how many beers I had. You I just heard it. Gilbert Arenas say that. You heard Gilbert Arenas say that. And all of a sudden, now every video you're talking about drinking, you're talking about how I laugh, you critiquing everything that I... And audience, please tell me. Please engage with me. What's wrong with that? If I decide to get on here and drink 5, 10, 12 beers, 
in the comfort of my own home, in the comfort of my own studio, in the comfort of my own establishment. What is wrong with that? How am I harming you? When, for one, you in Houston, bro. You in Atlanta, bro. You in Dallas, bro. How am I harming you? Explain to me how that makes sense. Versus it being you nitpicking at me trying to get a response. And you got the response now. So like I said, your channel is going to grow just off of this interview. I do. Who laughs like that? Who jokes like that? I seen him respond to Gilbert and Tammy and he was joking. Why do I have to respond to them? Why do I owe them? Aren't you already responding to them? Huh? Aren't you already responding to them? In the way that I feel like it. This is okay, you. that's cool. Yeah, that's fine. Not, that's cool. Cool. You're telling me how to respond. Cool, cool. The thought process is, if you're going to respond, yeah, yeah. people are doing numerous reactions. There you go again. Thought process. I'm doing a reaction. That's what he's about to speak on. People doing numerous reactions. I watched the video up until this point right here. Everything from here, I didn't see. So let's get it. Videos. I'm glad that mine got your attention, but the fact of the matter is, me personally, again, if that's the way you want to respond, and that's how you respond. To me, it didn't solve anything. I don't know if you were trying to, like, combat what was saying. You were saying that. that was I was actually laughing. Because if I haven't shown how ridiculous these men have been behaving, then I don't know what you've been saying. A Kwame Brown shot at his own children. And then the Kwame Brown that they figured out it was allegedly a rap. Ask your question. Do you no, want no, me? what I'm saying is, so you want me to entertain buffoonery? Do, do you, you want me to do you want me to go back and forth with guys that's calling my mother the D word and a guy who said he's gonna buy my mother's house and I'm give it to you? Guy that. I'm so saying do you want me to entertain you? the chatter or you want me to entertain you? Huh? Because you you throw, I, I understand this, but I'm, I'm, talking, I'm, I'm only putting up who paid to talk. That's all I'm doing. That doesn't mean I take on the opinion of whoever I'm putting up. These are people who are super chat, and I put up everybody who's super chat. So if anybody's entertaining the chat, it's you. I'm not putting up anybody's chat that didn't donate to the channel. That part. <laughs> that part right there, right? I ain't put up nobody chat who didn't donate to the channel. Come on, man. Come on, man. That message. So you can go ahead, bro. Yeah, so my, my thought process is how you respond is how you respond. And whether I do a reaction video where I agree or disagree, then that's what it is. But every other video is not with Kwame Brown. I have some videos where I agree and some videos where I dis uh, disagree. And for some reason, the videos where I di disagree, they were being called sneak disses versus your name and, and your likeness being in the video if I use your, your, your audio or whatever kiss me. But how can you disagree or agree if you're not following this man? You just stated in the last few sentences that I don't even follow you. How you disagreeing or agreeing with this man on what he's saying, bro? That's why I say you contradicting yourself, tough love. Like, come on, bro, get it together. But you can see the video for yourself. So I thought it was kind of odd where it was kind of like, oh, this is being, this is sneaky, this is this, this is that. I'm like, you can see the video for yourself. If you watch it, it's like you encouraged me to watch this four hour video. Well, hell, watch the, watch the hour long video or the 30 minute video and see for yourself versus having clips saying that he must be doing this. To me, I feel like you had a battery in your back and it wasn't you. Because when we met on Ms. 504's platform, you told me, hey, I didn't take none of your videos as disrespectful. But after the platform, now all of a sudden, the videos that were made before 504's platform, you felt that was disrespectful or you felt that was sneak I didn't. I said I didn't feel like you were disrespecting me, but I have to ask you some questions. Because okay, that's why I'm here. I always felt that he was a sneak disc. I said that from day one. When Gravity Takeout first pointed that out, I'm like, this dude is doing the exact same thing that we're doing. He's just trying to pretend like the nice guy. At the end of the day, when you meet a girl, we all want to have sex, whether we say, hey, yo, mama, what's up? Or we say, hey, excuse me, how do you mean? Oh, are we not? Do you, do you not want to have sex with a woman? When you when you meet her and, you, and she's attractive and you say, excuse me, miss, how are you doing? Do you not want to have sex with her just like the dude that's saying, hey, yo, mama, what's up? It depends if I'm attracted to her. He just I just said an attractive woman that you meet. Initially, we all, as men, we're, we're visual. So initially, whether how nice you talk or not. This is real-time reaction now. I didn't watch this part. Again, he just asked you that. If you're attracted to him, to her. What he said, if I'm attracted to her, bro, listen to the whole sentence. Listen to the whole question. 
before you rebuttal, before you respond. That's what we get. That's what we go wrong at because we start responding off of emotions. And even though we're trying to keep a calm, cool, collective face, and I respect the brother. He got the bearded gang. Salute to the bear gang, man. We out here. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, your shit looking sharp too, tough love. I got to get it to you, brother. I don't know how old you are, but, you know, I'm trying to get there, bro. You know what I mean? But what I'm saying is this. Kwame's asking you some real questions, bro. And you're seeming to pussyfoot around it, as I call it, versus answering the questions. Because you know... You have to be politically correct to keep your channel uh, popping, to keep your channel entertaining, whatever the case may be. That's that's what we do as YouTubers, right? But at the same time, man, answer the question. This is real man conversation, man. Let's get it. You can you can you know you want you know some of those cookies. That don't mean that's all you want, but it's the same result, and that's what you're doing on YouTube. Well, let's let's let's, let's, let's stay with that analogy. Let's stay with that analogy. If we both see an attractive woman and we say, yeah, I would love to have sex with that woman or whatever, how you approach her and how I approach her may be different. So how I approach this, this content on, on YouTube may be different Facts. than how you approach it. Facts. So my way may get the girl or my way may not get the girl. Facts. So your way may get, you know, um, um, views and my, my way may not. It all, it all depends That's on facts. what you want to listen to. And what, what. That's facts. I got to give it to him right there. That's facts. That's a good point that he made, right? And like I said, now that he's talking in his realness, let's let's see where it go from here. But what you're about? I just don't understand. Like like Carcino asked, what points do you disagree with Kwame? I've I've addressed those points. I can't. I well, can't agree with with me. So now that you're here with me, what points do you disagree that I said that you want to hold me to? Because you said that I don't talk about trading and coding. I'm doing more than talk. I said. I said. Mm. So, now the real conversation begins, y'all, because Kwame been saying trading and coding. Let's see where it goes. Hey, um, in my video that I feel like, because someone asked me, I, I thought you were a supporter of Kwame Brown, and I said, well, when I first came across Kwame Brown, it was him talking about trading and coding. what I just say? Trading and coding. That's what got all of us in this Kwame Brown. That's what got all of us tapped into this man because he was talking about some shit that's going to lift, that's going to uplift us, that's going to embetterment, that's, that's for the embetterment of the people. That's going to make us, come on, man. I don't even have the words to put together, but what I'm saying is this. Y'all know what I'm saying, like tough love. L let me hear what you got to say. I said at some point in time, he kind of got involved with the back and forth doing other things or whatever the case may be. Which is fine. Everybody ain't gonna always talk about trading the coding or whatever. But mm -hmm. my thought process was, let's get back to the positive. Let's get back to helping these kids and, and talking about the positive. So that's always been. But when did he leave off of that? His message has always been the kids. Why are you at these colleges? Why are you at these schools? Why are you at this? The brother is a first round draft pick. He's talking from his experience. He's not talking from something that he just made up in the atmosphere and just say, okay, well, I'm going to get on YouTube and I'm going to do this and see if I pop. No, he actually has a name. Kwame Brown is actually a first-round draft pick, whether you want to believe it or not. You may not like the brother for the depiction. The first-round draft pick may not fit the profile that you necessarily would like to admire, but that's who it is, bro. That's who it is. When he first came out, I remember. Everybody thought he was Michael Jordan's son because he was up on the mic like this. Like, But like he's saying, he didn't get all the – good treatment from Mike. He didn't get all the, yeah, that a boy from Mike. No, he got the tough love. And what that did, that, that made that brother better, man. And the, 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 the narrative or whatever case be. So whatever else is being pushed, it's kind of, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's, it's crazy to me. But that's, that's crazy to me that you were always the guy that's telling people what their channel is and what their message is. Mm -hmm. You can't find one video that said, my message is trading in COVID. You can't find one video. I said video. when I got introduced to you. Oh, hold on. So you mean to tell me. Your, your message. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You mean to tell me. You didn't see. Because I didn't come to the internet talking about trading. So now it seemed like he backpedaled. Now you just said, when I got introduced to you, that's what your message was. But you just said, I don't even follow you. Now you finna say some crazy shit like, yeah, I was following you. And I stopped following you because... I didn't feel like your message was consistent or whatever the case, whatever words you want to put together. Let's see what he said. Nicole, so you missed the Becky with the good hair. You mm -hmm. missed the back and forth with the athletes. That the was the 
Yeah, before trading and coding. Before trading and coding? Yes. The hottest, yes, sir. The hottest month ever when people were talking about Kwame Brown the most. When it was when I, when I first, and I first, when I first, first, when I first came across you, it was a trading and coding things or whatever. Whatever came after that. No, I'm talking about, I'm, I'm answering you. The, my first initial video was in response to mm -hmm. Becky with the good hair mm -hmm. and Steven Jackson. <laughs> and for like a month straight, Mm -hmm. Those videos were going viral. Those went, that's when I'm in, I'm on a iPhone 8 in a pickup and there's 10,000 people in the chat. So you missed all of that and you only heard what I said, trading and coding in school? When I came across you, it was trading and coding. And it would happen so other, other people that I was, hold on for a second. Other people that was subscribed to you, that's when I came across the whole Matt Barnes and um, Stephen A. Smith or whatever case may be. So I, I didn't, I wasn't on that wave of, of what you just said, I was I was I came after the trading coding, so that's why I said when I was introduced to you um, through your video, it was about trading and coding. So I was like, damn, this is a former NBA player talking about trading and coding. This is exactly what we need to be pushing. So that's that's what really locked in on. So were you subscribing not, bro? Were you subscribing or not? Because you just said in a few sentences ago that you weren't, you don't even follow this man. So how do you know what the message was? Is my point. You keep talking about all these people that are subscribed to you and reaching your hand out like you can reach somebody. But what I'm saying is, obviously, you you in your studio setting. There's nobody there with you or maybe a couple people. Are they subscribed? Are they the ones giving you the, the like, come on, or who's got a battery in their back? On, on the whole situation. It probably wouldn't even been Matt Barnes. I don't I don't care nothing about Matt Barnes and your, your beef with Matt Barnes. So, I mean, it, it probably wouldn't, I, I probably wouldn't even care, to be honest with you. When you start talking about trading and coding, I said, okay, this is something, let me share this or, or like this or say something about it. And I think that's when the video actually began. And that was me agreeing with you. So, if you were agreeing with me, all I said was, trick. Kwame, wrong question. If you were agreeing with me, how weren't you subscribed to my channel? How weren't you watching my channels? How weren't you watching the videos that other people were sending you? You obviously was up on what I was saying for you to agree or disagree. Come on, man. Trading and coding should be in all schools so that all these children have an opportunity to have an alternative other than going to jail to learn a trade or getting out of high school and trying to go to a college and getting uh, behind in debt. So. Do you agree that trading and coding need to be in schools? Or are you just upset with me because I don't use my platform to say it every day? Mm. I'm not upset with you. Uh, first of all, I'm not upset with you. Second of all, the level of consistency that I thought that you were going to promote with the trading and coding, I didn't see it. So I said that. So it wasn't about what you better do or else. So to go back to my point, we tend to judge prematurely based on our own analysis. And that's what he just said. The level of consistency that I thought you were going to promote. You thought that I was to pr that I should promote my channel the way that you thought I should because I came in beefing with Stephen A. I came in beefing with Stephen Jackson. I came in beefing with uh, Matt Barnes, Becky with the good hair, whatever you want to call him. Right? Now, my narrative has changed to trading and coding and let's push this program for these kids and I'm not only talking about it online but he's actually doing things behind the scenes that's making real noise but because guys don't tap in and we only online it was about hey I don't see this bro you know can we get back to this or whatever case be it's like if, if you keep because you keep to me you keep trying to uh, well you've already said this this narrative of trying to be positive and doing the air coach to me you know what I'm saying? I kind of see that as another way. Cause I see, and that's why I know he in his feelings. Because Kwame ain't did that, right? He he said it again. When Kwame, when Kwame said, you pushing this, you're supposed to be pushing this positive message. Or you or you package your message as positive. However he worded it, right? He didn't put up air quote. But he take it as offense. And that's how I know he take it as offense. And he's trying to keep his cool. But let's see how it goes. I don't think I'm, I'm doing it, you know what I'm saying, to you. But the fact of the matter is, I feel like if we're going to talk about, you know, helping children and trading and coding, yeah, I would think there would be a level of consistency there. And if we fall off, we somebody should remind us to get back to us, whether it's a subscribe or not. And at that particular time, I was a subscriber. <laughs> so you was a subscriber. 
What made you? What made you stop? What made you decide not to subscribe anymore, bro? What your channel grew too much? You you got in your feelings? Like, come on, man, let's keep it one hundred. 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 What made you decide to hit the unsubscribe button from Kwame Brown channel? That's my question to you, Tough Love. What made you decide to hit the unsubscribe button from Kwame channel? Because everything you just said. It made sense, but it didn't make sense, if that makes sense. So, okay, my, my original question was, so did you agree that trading and coding need to be in all schools and STEM now? Because STEM is also the wave of the future. It's not just about, you know, one thing. So uh, are you saying that, that you agree with me that it should be in schools? Or, or not? Because I still haven't heard the disagreement. I, I, I said I agree. I think so you agree that it should be in school. So let me ask you this. Have you donated to any STEM or any uh, program that has anything to do with coding? Or have you been to any town hall meetings uh, advocating for uh, the city council members to put trading and coding in school? Because I have I've been to several uh, town hall meetings in reference to uh, trading and coding. I have not advocated for that, no. So what I I've advocated for after school specials, tutors being um, um, uh, paid for. So you so so you haven't advocated for trading and scolding, trading and coding, trading and coding, trading and coding, trading and coding. <laughs> I ain't gonna say it five times, see man. Anyway, like I said, um, trading and coding, right? You haven't advocated for trading and coding being in schools. Damn, did I say it five times? I did. Anyway, like I said, you haven't advocated for that. However, you've advocated for tutors being paid properly. So, in your in your mind, it ain't about the kids. It's about the people that's teaching the kids, that's trying to reach the kids for them to get paid. Because you feel like, oh, you've been in the military, you got a little platform, you're going to go out there and get yours, how you get yours. Uh, right, I'm gonna leave it alone. Salute, salute to the military. Salute to the to the gang that's that's protecting us. You know what I'm saying? When we when we lay down, go to sleep, when we when we at work every day, when, you know what I'm saying? Salute to salute to the whole army, salute to the whole navy, salute to the whole marines, salute to the whole air force, salute to the whole all of the military, man. All of the military. United States military is the shiznit. And I'm going to say that, nigga. I mean that, nigga. I wish I had my motherfucking flag right now. I'm going to wave that motherfucker. Real shit. So I've advocated for, um, um, in, re in reference to uh, public defenders, instead of having public defenders actually having lawyers that give a damn so that way their cases don't have to be 50 cases. They can be smaller. So, yeah, I've, I've done some things here in Houston, yes. So what I'm saying is, and what I encourage everybody around to do, because I believe a lot of us like to talk and like to detract from other people, but it's going to take money. It's going to take money, and it's going to take your time. So mm -hmm. sitting on the internet, me saying trading and coding every day, is not going to get it done. It's a lot of people on the internet that with big tongues, and they're just talking. That part. I'm that not part. just talking. When I started showing that I donated to Saginaw STEM, people started saying, oh, what type of millionaire brag about doing that? So I... But I got on Kwame channel. Kwame had a question up in the panel. And the question was, who are you debunking? Or who are you challenging in your community to do this and that and that and that? Who what 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 legislative? What 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 councilman? What you know what I'm saying? Any representative of your community. And I got on there and I told him, I'm not necessarily challenging those guys. I'm challenging us, we the people, to get out here and do what we have to do, get on the ground. Martin Luther King did it. Malcolm X did it. You know what I'm saying? Those guys, they paved the way for us for, for to be able to even be on YouTube right now, bro. Come on, man. How many of y'all would think that we will, we will be allowed to be on YouTube speaking our minds the way that we speak our minds and the way that we have dialogue and dialect and certain conversations? This shit would not happen if it wasn't for guys like Martin Luther, Malcolm, Marcus Garvey, Bob Marley. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. Bob was a songstress, a, 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 a musician, but he was a... Hmm. 
I didn't show it, but I'm still doing it. I'm still saying the Saginaw still should be all over America. If the if the government won't do it, because somehow what black folks and some people, my detractors, not all black folks, what they try to do is instead of doing the work, I'll just sit back and talk about the person who introduced this thought to say that they needed to be in schools. And it's the government job. We just found 60 million to put together a crack pipe package for people to do crack. So you mean to tell me our government can't put together some money for our black American kids and our white American kids and our Spanish American kids? You were in the military. They just found a couple hundred million dollars to go give to somebody else to fight a war. They have money to give $450,000 to illegals. What happened to the black folks? What happened to our educational system? What happened to us? And that Let's see how you answer this. Come on. It's not Kwame Brown's job. Mm -hmm. It's my job to bring awareness. It's my job to stand behind what I say, which I do with my money and my time. Mm -hmm. And it's your job to do the same thing, not to tell me to do it. Okay. So um, I think that, first of all, you brought some awareness um, to, I guess, the YouTube arena in regards to saying trade. You see the downplay? I think that. First of all, you brought some awareness. No, motherfucker, he brought the awareness. Come on, tough love, bro. You 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 make me lose a lot of respect for you right now. Cause the shit you saying ain't 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 making sense, bro. And you supposed to be a stand up dude. You've been in the military. I got family members that been in the military. Go look at my page. I've had conversations, tough conversations with my family member that these come on, bro. What you saying ain't making sense. Why you you trying to debunk what the fuck he talking about versus Standing on your own too, and just my nigga. Then coded. Um, there have been some other people that came out and say, "Hey, I've been talking about it. Great." It never came across my my channel. But again, once you stated that, I said, "Okay, this is some good stuff. This is some cool stuff. Let me share it." And I say this numerous times on my platform. If there is a content creator out there that has a message that has something to say, I share it to my community tab because we all have different attributes. We all have different narratives that we're pushing that we're saying this is for the greater good. So if you start talking about trading and coding and I pass that on, maybe you're going to, maybe you're going to be the source for that. I have no idea. But the thought process is one video about trading and coding. Maybe you will be the source for that. How about nigga you tap in and we be the source for that, bro? What the fuck are you talking about, bro? One video about trading and coding. Nigga, this nigga has made several videos, several interviews, several motherfuckers come up on this panel. He had Judge Joe Brown on that motherfucker. Angela, man, stop playing, bro. Stop playing, tough love. Has nothing to do with going three months without talking about trading and code. Because so I, don't have to, I, about I, I don't have I never went three months without talking about it. For one, I always share that on stem. Number two, you're not a subscriber, so you don't see those videos. The people who are gonna send you videos, and this is what you don't understand. Mm -hmm. The people you're not in control of your own platform. Because the people that are sending you videos, I guarantee you they're sending you videos about something that they don't like about what I said. Why don't you ask those people that, hey, I connected with, I connected with this brother through trading and coding and the positive message. Why don't you guys send me something when he's talking the message that I want to hear? Instead of you sending me when he's talking about Gilbert, instead of you sending me when he's talking about Tammy, send me the videos that I resonate with when he's talking about trading and coding, and that's what I can get behind me. I think that was a little bit biased what you just said. Why? Because here's the, thought, here's the thought process. You get videos on Tough Love. He gonna get with this thought process. Go ahead, go ahead, Tough Love. That that people say I'll sneak this in. Here. But the good videos in reference to giving, like say, okay, I agree with this point, which there's been points that I've agreed with. Those videos don't get sent to you. So the same thing you're saying for me, I would expect the same courtesy back and forth and say you hey, you're sending me your videos and I say not interested all the time. I've watched several of your videos where you were talking about me months back, and I didn't say a word. I didn't say nothing because I knew what it was. It's like, okay, that's your opinion, cool. But it's like, when does your opinion stop on one name? Your opinion about me is, is repetitive. I don't have a repetitive opinion of Dwayne Wayne. I don't have a repetitive opinion of anybody who's not talking about me. I can get on YouTube and talk about anything, and certain people are going to watch, and I think that's why people are jealous. I can get on the internet and just open up some packages that I just got from P.O. Box. Mm -hmm. And people are going to watch. And I don't care how many. I'm not going to play them. Are you saying in front of your audience that my videos are solely based on Kwame Brown? That's no, what I'm, not, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is you're the 
the same as everybody else on YouTube. You figure out that the algorithms is going to watch what's popular. And mm-hmm. you keep putting people's name in, framing it as, I'm not afraid. I call these people out. I put their name in. When you're not telling the truth, that that benefits you to put a YouTuber's name that has bigger subscribers. I think, I think that's that you think true. I've said, I've said this numerous times. First of all, I'm going to market my video the way everyone else markets that video. If you talk about Gilbert Arenas, Thomas Sotomayor, Dwayne Wayne, Charlemagne the God, all of these people have equal or to bigger subscribers to you or have a bigger platform than you. So once you start talking about those people, there is no difference. So we're doing the same thing. That's absolutely false. Okay. That's absolutely false. So you don't you don't put people's name in the titles, or you don't make the subject of the video about these people I just named. What you should have asked was why are you saying that's false, and then I can answer. Well, I mean, if you say it's false, I would think you would follow up with the actual answer. Since you I'm, I'm trying to, but you tried to put a set of ideals out there for me to answer based on what you said. I'm saying it's false, and I would like you to pause for me to tell you why. Cool, I'm pausing. But it's absolutely false because everybody you named said something about me first. I've never spoken your name before you spoke mine. It's not about who spoke whose name first. It's about what you said. That's your opinion. That's your opinion. That's your opinion. Message again. This. <laughs> I'm getting tired of watching it, right? Yeah, y'all go check out Kwame Brown. And y'all go tap in and watch the whole video. Because this, this shit is getting annoying, man. I'm going to let it play a couple more minutes. But damn, man. Come on, Tough Love. I, I didn't think he was going to go out like this, bro. I didn't think it was gonna go out like this. You just killed yourself on the internet, my nigga. Like, what are you doing? Like, it's still a grown man conversation, but you still handling yourself like a peon, bro. Like, it, it makes no sense because Kwame is asking you some real intellectual questions and you choosing to defer from the questions and pussyfoot around them, like I said before. And like, come on, bro, answer the questions. Wait, wait, you said there were no difference. You can't tell me it's not about that when you're stating a, a, a so-called fact saying there's no difference. There is there is a difference. The difference is everybody that you named that I spoke about spoke about me. You're speaking about me over and over again, and I never spoke about you, sir. There is a difference in that. Yeah, but I don't I don't need to I don't need to wait for you to say something to me to have a, a, a perspective though. There are numerous people that you don't even know on YouTube that you that 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 do reaction videos that that really go in and say a whole. All right, my nigga, and again, like I said, your video got his attention. Nigga, be happy. You on this platform, be happy. But you steady trying to play this tough guy role, tough love. Come on, my nigga, knock it off, bro. Knock it off. It ain't, it ain't even about that. It's about you know what I'm saying the fact that y'all can have a real dialogue, a real dialogue, and interact with each other and on a grown man tip, bro. Like, you seem like a cool brother, right? At the end of the day, I don't know you, you don't know me. But you seem like a cool brother, man. Keep it keep it G, bro. You, you on some bullshit right now, my nigga. A bunch of stuff. But I mean, again, that wasn't, that wasn't the, that wasn't the original uh, statement. It was, you were putting my name in videos. And I said, well, you're putting other people's name in videos. You're doing videos just like I'm doing videos. Okay. So you're working in your videos. I'm, I'm, I'm putting people's names in videos that talk about me. Gilbert Arenas just went on Instagram and wrote me then their dissertation, some shit he never did in college. So I responded on YouTube. I'm not gonna respond on Instagram. And maybe you're not abreast enough on everything that goes on because you don't watch and you unsubscribe, but you're abreast to all of the negative things. And that's why I say you're biased. You can sit here and hold me accountable, hold Skinny accountable, but then you'll run over in other people's chat that's saying everything that you claim not to mm-hmm. like in the right dictionary at all. Who chat did you see me chance up there? I don't want to mention these guys' names, but you and I know. I would say that's absolutely false. Anytime Why is that? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Why is that? Okay. Anytime that I've been in a chat and it's got to a point where it started getting disrespectful or whatever kiss be, I would leave. So you don't see me in there applauding, hitting 100 like, whatever, none of that. So that's a fact. So I've never done that. Well, I'm just saying, you said I have respect for certain YouTubers, and these YouTubers are the most disrespectful people in the world. But you say certain. You you, you can't say certain and then say these YouTubers are the most disrespectful. Because there's more than one. Again, anyone that you have a personal situation with. Not personal. I don't know these people. A YouTube 
issue. All of this is our. All of this is algorithm. This is not an issue. Cool. These guys are well, algorithms, and that's why you. What I'm saying is, don't include me in that. I have nothing to do with that. I think you do. I think you do the same thing these other guys do. If I was to go back down to a 1,000 subscriber YouTuber, you would make videos about me laughing or saying he's down to 1,000. You're gonna forever when see have you, my when, name. When, when have you heard? See, here's the thing, Kwame. And I, and I really want to I really want to make sure that this is this stays even for you. You know what I'm saying? And for me as well. When have you heard me say that you're losing subscribers? When, when have you ever heard me say that? I didn't say that for that to be the point. I didn't say that. But for you're that. making statements as if I'm saying uh, you said I would I would well, laugh. I you. Now you see why I'm tired because everything that Kwame is asking him, he's rebuttaling with like a like a question versus an answer, and. To me, that that's 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 man, come on, that's weak, bro. That's weak, man. Like tough love, man. You got you got a real name on YouTube, bro. Don't fuck your name up on YouTube, bro. No bullshit. Don't 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 go out here and start clout chasing, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, it's gonna get you some more followers. It's gonna get you some more views. It might get you a couple more dollars in your pocket, but bro, stick to the script, b. Stick to the script. Real nigga shit, man. Tell you why I said that statement. If that's what you want to know. Yeah, but you I'm make a statement that, that has nothing to do with me. Okay, I'm saying that I have nothing to do with you, but you bring my name up multiple times a month with my name in the title, and you're talking about the things that I'm saying and doing on almost a weekly basis. When I I'm done with this video, man. Yeah, like I said, y'all want to see the full clip? Go to Kwame Brown page. Check it out, man. Him talking to uh, Tough Love, Mrs. Kenny, all these guys. Like, man, listen here. Kwame, Kwame is a soldier, bro. Kwame is a gangster in his own aspect. Like, it don't mean that he's a killer. It don't mean that he's a drug dealer. It don't mean none of that. Like, Kwame is a gangster, bro. Kwame do his thing. Kwame is very intellectual. That's what I love about the brother because I watch this brother and I have, I'm, I'm able to gain insight, right? I was on JT the bigger figure pay. I got his number right now. I could text this nigga, call this nigga right now, and tell him, JT, let's get on the panel. But I'm not clout chasing. I'm not clout chasing. I'm not I'm not looking for a nigga to come and put me on. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing what I'm doing out of man, I'm done with it, bro. <laughs> like this is ridiculous. For real, for real. Like, wow.